So hi everybody and welcome back. This is a C++ tutorial series for absolute beginners. This is video 135 and we continue with our exercise. We finished task one, we finished task two, we finished task three almost. <laughs> the problem in task three was that it is very difficult actually to print out uh, this um, a table on screen at least if you try this format here it's not so easy and in this video actually i want to talk about my solution which is not even finished but i want to show you that to try this is uh, worth to do it because you learn so much about programming it and that's why i will talk about this uh, briefly uh, what i did because my solution is not finished let me show you what i have here let me see the coder a and this one is my solution here on top this below not this below we will talk today and try to convert this one into this one but the real solution is this one here that's the real solution and that's not so easy but if you try this as a beginner that's very good because you learn many many things and you repeat all the things what we learned so far and that's why it's nice so i present now my solution which is we convert this line here to this one here so let's get into it all right so we go down we finished here creating this kind of stuff that was the last thing task two we created here a function where we can pass in an array and this array is printed out and that was this outprint here and it was this line by line outprint and before we go on here is something very interesting to mention and the thing is how we can use this uh, variables k and i so in my setup what you see right now here let's see k is in front and i is the second one what does this mean so let's check it i is the inner loop right which means here which means it will go uh, through the row uh, which means it goes column by column this i here and k is my outer loop uh, uh, yes uh, here which is um, outside of this one here which means it will go first let's say to zero this means here at zero uh, in front of this row it's a row and then it stays here at zero till the inner loop is finished and goes through so that's very important to know why is this so important to know because you can go also downwards first and then go to the next word and downwards and this is very easy to achieve but let's watch the numbers here first again so that you can see what i mean in a moment go there a. so you see the numbers what i have right now goes thousand nine thousand four thousand right thousand nine thousand nine thousand we are going first this row and then eight thousand two thousand three thousand eight thousand two thousand three thousand then we go this row and so on but if i stop here and change now this one here to i and this one to k so i switch the positions then this one will go down and that is very important that we keep this in mind how the table is read go there a and now let's watch again the values it starts with thousand and now look what happens here thousand eight thousand it goes down to six thousand here and then it starts here nine thousand two thousand and five thousand and you see it goes what happens here is um it says okay i go first to k which is uh, k is zero which is here and then it says then i go to i but the call here is uh, the inner loop is here i change all time i i stay on k which means i stay on zero here and i will change all time the i here in this case so it means I will all time go down, right? Tick, 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 like this one. And that's why it's important that you know which one 
uh, how you set this up. In my case, I want not use this setup here, which means it goes down. I want that my setup is so that first it goes this row, then it goes to the next row, and then it goes to the next row. Right now it goes first to this column and goes down, then it jumps to the next column and goes down, and that I don't want. That's why I said here, this one, oops, not this one, uh, this one here to um, uh, K and this one to I. So now I have exactly what I want because it stops at um, here, K0, which is here. And then I, it will go here, here and here through in this inner loop. So that's very important. I hope you have, uh, you are careful because that's important when you want to make here this uh, set up uh, to this format here because our goal is to make this format here right so with that said let's continue so the next thing what we can see is how we can go now from this format at least to this format my format is easier than this format here this one is really complex and you should try this one here and you repeat a lot and you will train a lot but in this two video i will try my solution which is not good it's simple and still okay for training and I show you many things and we repeat many keywords and so many structures and so on. That's the reason why I make this. So let's go. First of all, how we can make now a new, uh, how we can define this three lines here, because you can see here, this one is printing out only one line with all the values, but I need only three lines. So the first thing what you have to think about is how you can print exactly three values. And there are different ways. One way is, for example, defining a if loop with a range. So you write something like if, and then you will, let's write first the body here of the if, let's, and put this one here in. I hope you, oops, control Z. I hope you know how to write a if and all this kind of stuff by now, because if is one of the most used uh, things in programming, it's all time a condition, and then we use this condition. And yeah, so how we define this condition? Most time when we write a if we use just one condition or we make one compare, right? So uh, how I can make this, that this one is just putting three values here. One way is to say, okay, check a condition where I have uh, printed out three, uh, three values and then after the three values you should uh, don't print this one anymore. For example, you should print a new line and go to the next. So this is more or less our task here. It's a little complicated. There are different ways. Of course, you not uh, you don't even use a if here. There are different solutions. I use this one. And what I said is, okay, first we need to define a range, right? I think a range, I mean, it should start here, it end here. And after this end, it should be not more printing. It should print a new line because it should not print this one here. So I define here a range. How we can define here a range? You say, okay, I make here a start point and then I define the start point. And then you say, I define here an end point. And yeah, I did this already and I show you my solution because it will take too much to type in and so on. But uh, I explained this. And here I define a range, for example, like this. Copy. Interesting is my definition is bad. Careful. And we will see why in a moment. But yeah, I defined here a range. We, I hope you did something similar or even better than this one because this code is not very good. And here I created to define this range a array row counter. So this row counter I call, it would be even better to call this array range instead array row counter. Mm. Anyway, array row counter is also good because this range which I define here is, it counts zero, then it says one, and then it says two. And that's why I probably called it array row counter. Because uh, normally these are columns, <laughs> not the uh, row. Uh, also, it's also not the right naming here. So you see there are some mistakes and so on, but it's okay. We still, I still know what it is uh, because array row counter would be go here down normally. 
but yeah let's call this this way let's notice this is bad practice <laughs> bad naming <laughs> and we should change this normally but i keep this because then i have to change all things later so let's continue okay array row counter means this one i created a counter and this counter will just count how many how long the range is so three elements after three elements i want that this counter stops let's create fast this variable because i have not created here let's copy this one here and it's a counter which means it's an int probably most time counters are just ints waste here and initialize it with zero because that uh, that you initialize it with zero is here important because this zero here is my stat value by the way which is the slot a value because array starts all time with zeros then zero is my start value here as well and then i define this range and how i define this range now here you can see i say this counter this array counter starts i start define a start point all right let's uh let's write you some comments here this is my start point this is my end point and this is have no clue have no clue so this is absolute i have no clue why i need this one here all right so let's check this my start points starts i said is greater equal i hope you know this greater equal sign this is an operator let's make here our operator uh, repetition and then here i made a comparison if this array counter is greater zero okay my start point defined if this is true then i can go to the body but i need here i set here more conditions so we see i set here not only one condition i have here start point condition end point condition and no clue condition so and how i uh, combined this you see this uh, double ampersand uh, operator careful we know two ways to use that at least two ways i think so the one way is here this is an operator which is a end operator and an op end operator means what both sides the right side and the left side must be true only then the whole expression here becomes true and you can enter the body i hope you know this if not repeat this it's important here and so i check the condition one start point condition i check the condition endpoint condition and here i still have no clue i check this condition too which means also with an end and that must be also true so let's watch a little bit the conditions here was the start condition zero all right because i start here with slot zero and i want go here one two three all right i go one two three which means my end condition is here after uh, three but careful we start with arrays with slot zero which means it is slot zero one two let's write this here as well as a comment to make it easy range let's write here range is zero one two i need this this is my range which i have with arrays because it starts not with one two three because it starts with zero one two and because of that i use here array endpoint is less than three um because uh, if it's less than three it means um that it's exactly the endpoint this one here and why i make this this way because here in this body i have an increment because our array counter will be incremented here and here's this increment operator i hope you know this one as well this is a shortcut instead of writing array row counter plus one and then assign it back to this one we write just array plus plus is the shortcut and i hope you know it if not watch this again that's why we make it we repeat many things here and yeah so i defined the range and now i have still defined here something which i have no clue that happens sometimes too sometimes you will find in codes um things you can't explain let's try to see what this is have no clue it is here an array row counter it says it's greater than two okay this one is greater two but here what i have here this is a parenthesis and here i have a not sign this is again operator right this not which means it negates the whole thing which means not greater than two and this is interesting here why because we have not 
uh, a separate operator for not greater. If you try to find not greater operator, you will not find it, which means we have to construct something like that. And this is one way to construct this. Because we have only operators equal, less, greater, but not uh, not an operator like not greater, for example, two. We have not this kind of operator. And this is a way to construct something like that if you want make a limit on top. It says here, this one should not greater two. And when we check this one, uh, that makes no sense. We have already defined it here, right? We have here a limit already, endpoint. So this here makes still no sense. We continue. This can happen in code. Sometimes happen that we have no clue. It. Perhaps we get an idea when we go on, perhaps not. We will see it. And then we have to test this kind of stuff, which we don't understand right now. All the other things we probably understand here, we print it out. Here we increment our counter, which goes to this range one, two and three, which checks then all time here. And it prints out, but this one here, we have no clue. So with that said, we print out and check if this is working so far. Is Let's see what we have here. All time check your code. And yes, it is working. It says, 1000, 8000, 6000, is that my expected numbers? Actually, it's not working. <laughs> and what is not working here? These are absolutely not my expected numbers. <clears throat> Why not? Why? Because I said I want to uh, print out the values this way, right? And right now I'm printing out them anyhow down. Okay, this is not working like I intended. All right, let's see why not <laughs> in a moment. <clears throat> but uh, now this uh, would take a little bit time. You would think about it. I skip this kind of stuff and go on. And let's see uh, if you see if it's go down, for example, perhaps we messed up here. The numbers here could be right, because this one is our output and this one stops here. Let's see. <clears throat> this one, this K here, is outside. Oh, and this I here is inside, which means this I will be changed and K stays here all time, which means in my case, because I have copied this one here and paste this in, I have to change this again. I have, yeah, double check because before we said it right and now I can check this one more time can happen when you use copy and uh, copy and paste is very fast, but danger because you have to check all time the values. And right now you saw why you have to check all time the values. Right now I made a very simple mistake and <clears throat> the values was not correct uh, like I intended to use. And now you see 1000, 9000, 4000, 9000. 1000, 9000, 4000. Yes, now it works. So if you use copy paste all time, check the values because it looks similar like this one here looked exactly similar like before, but this little uh, variable was changed and it has a different behavior. And sometimes you oversee it like me, right? I did here, right? So let's continue, but we still not check this one here. Okay, we check this one here. We have figured it out. We have figured out we have a range and it works. And yeah, let's go to the, let's skip this here and say, we will see later. Perhaps we have not understand it right now. Perhaps we understand it later. And let's go to the next point. So I made the next point. The next point is just here. I need a, a, a new line because from this line to come down, it's just a new line, right? So I have anyhow include a new line here. And then I have just to define a new range and defining a new range means just this one copying and then change here the numbers, right? Let's copy this one. Let's go here, paste it because this one is a range definition, right? And the only thing what we change now here to make the other range here, it's just say, Okay, the start point is not zero. Now the start point is three because we have here zero, one, two. And let's write here our new range. Let's this one range. I need the range uh, three, four, 
and five here make this one similar and to make this one i say okay start here with three it must be less what it must be less six is this right could be right why is it six here because when you count start with three then you have here three four five six is not included that's why it must be less than six and here i have again this problem what is that let's check my code here on top why what i have wrote there oh my god this one gets even more difficult here first i have this strange thing here which i don't check and now i have here a little bit more which i don't check let's copy this one in and paste this as well uh, but before we paste this one let's paste it not let's put this one what we have there which we don't check here in comments and we will paste it later let's see if this here is working why i should use this one if this is already working because here i don't know what this one is and i don't know what this one is and our logic says right this one worked and now perhaps this one works too let's test it and of course i said we need a new line and we have not wrote a new line now so we know this one will not work yes it goes here uh thousand nine thousand it's the first line is working but the second line is anyhow not working one reason is we need definitely a new line because i said okay from this point to come to this point we need a new line but why is this not printing out this range this is more interesting because i defined here this range it says here okay array counter uh, the next thing is array counter for example <clears throat> uh, three then anything is wrong right and we have to figure this out and hmm uh, you can try to analyze this one and well, how we analyze this one here we can go here with our debug we use all time this debug let's repeat this debug if you have no clue most time debug uh, gives you more information and you get it and here at this point let's see what happens here is my if statement the debug jumps into this if statement and it says here it says here okay error counter is at this point one is this possible this can't be possible why is error counter here one because i know we have set it here plus 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 which means we expect this error oops sorry it's right it's one the point is here we are here in a loop and this is the first iteration which means indeed arrow is one let's skip this one here it becomes two which means this one gets skipped because this one fulfills not the condition okay and now array counter is still two let's see now it becomes here free at this point here it becomes free now now it's interesting right now our array car row counter one is free we can see it and now this line will be executed which means which means this one should be true this one should be true and this one we still don't check let's happen let's dive into it and this one skipped it which means this whole thing here was failed and the reason why it can fail is only because of this uh, end operator and the end operator asks ask this side if you are true it asks this side if you are true and this end operator makes the same thing it asks this side if you are true and it asks the other side here if you are true depends that's not so important i hope you learned this end operator it's a little bit more complicated if you dive into more complicated structures but in the end it this if you see this end operator this double end operator it means all time all must be true then you can jump into it and that's why i know instantly that something was not true here and yeah we have to figure out why because the number was free right and probably that thing what i don't know here then the reason for that one i will kick it now out if you have problems like this one and you don't understand even this code here let's kick it out and use that what you know 
but uh, don't save this as a comment perhaps perhaps not really kick it out but first save it still as a comment perhaps it makes sense later but right now it makes no sense so let's test this one more time we try to understand this strange code and i test this and yeah all is printed out that was my goal right but uh, this was expected because I said there is a new line needed, but I have not included the new line. So with other words, at this point, I realized I did not need this one here. And this line here, I have here a strange array row switch flag. I don't know what this one is. Perhaps bad naming because I read it and I don't know what this array switch flag is. Well, um, a candidate for a bad naming again which means we have to figure out what this is, which means analyzing. It's all time bad. And this one, we <laughs> don't know why we need a upper counter because we have here already a upper limit. So we still don't know here. Let's go step by step. We go to the next point and say, okay, but I reach my first goal. It prints this one out. It prints this one out, but it is not printing out them with a new line. So which means I need just to find a way to make here a new line. So how we can make here a new line? So what is the way? If I would print here, for example, here a new line, as they day, day out, uh, adjust here a new line, like so, this one will not work. Why it will not work? Because we have here a for loop, it goes check this one, and then it makes a new line, and it will make after every irritation a new line. So this one will not work. So I have to find another way. And I skip now this analyze way. There are different ways. And I try, I show you the solution because that would take too much time here. And my solution is, okay, to make a new line, I add one more flag. And actually that was a bad naming in my case. And the new thing is what I added here is, a new condition because I need a condition who uh, who checks when I have to ch make a new line, right? And I so I need a new condition for this printout statement which says when you should go for the new line. And interesting is this condition was not set for the first one, but we have set it for the second one. That's anyhow wrong. <laughs> uh, so. Let's see how we make this, if this is wrong or not. So what I made is actually this array, uh, this, uh, this uh, flag here, this array row counter flag here is not the new line. Sorry, that was irritating. <laughs> and you see, naming is very important to analyze the code a little bit. What I did is actually, I created here something, a very strange switch statement. Let's copy this one down. This is my solution for a new line. Perhaps there are better solution, but I used a switch statement to repeat also switch a little bit because we should repeat many things here. And how we build a switch again, I hope you know it and you can see it first. We write the switch here. We write the condition, uh, for example, a variable and important. It must be an integral variable, which means it must be converted to a number or something like that. And I hope you know this all and then you can define the cases here and if you find define the cases you don't need this uh, early brackets normally but we do it because then we see the scope exactly and it's better for us and then after every case we make a break because this break signals that we have found our condition but sometimes you can skip this break but if you skip this what happens is if you found this condition, it will jump to the next condition as well if there is no break. So that's very important. I hope you know this with a switch statements. And one more info about switch statements. We have sometimes a default and you see my default has nothing. I just wrote it here for repetition. And interesting is we have not talked about this one. This default has also a break. And the reason for that is because best practice, they say, Default normally needs not a break. Normally not, because default is all most time at the end 
of our switch statements, which means all the other cases work not. But this default needs a break in best practice because they say it can happen that you add in future another case here below the default or this default is not at the end. And that can cause problems to avoid this from start, just use by default also a break. And that's easier and then you don't have to think much. So I hope you remember switch statements and that was the keyword. But now the very important question is why I make here a switch statement, how I can solve this problem to make a new line. Let's go to the use case of a switch statement here. So we jump into it and I said, yeah, I need a new line. I need a check and actually a switch statement is a check too. We remember we can convert most switch statements to if statements and a if statement most time back to a switch statement. And which means this is just another way of a conditional check. And the condition I write here, and then depends on the condition, I have here my cases. And here I say, okay, I need a new space after I finish this row, which means after I have print out a, a zero, one, two, after this one, which is then, I need a uh, switch it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I need, I need a new line. And that means in my case, I said, okay, if you are the counter, because we have here defined this counter here, arrow counter, it's a bad naming. It should be called more a uh, column counter. But okay, uh, if this one here is free because range is zero, should not make a new line, one should not make a new line, two should not make a new line. When I'm free after Q, it should make a new line, which means I become free. Then you go here, the case I say, if this new arrow counter is free, make a new line. This is one solution. The interesting part here is also, wait a minute, why is this working? And why is this not working if I just write here a new line? Why I need here a special condition outside uh, of this if statement. Why not just write it here? There is a problem because one is I have not tested it. <laughs> the other thing could be that this one uh, should this increment here is incrementing, right? So here it increments it. And then after this if statement is finished, it's not jumping directly up to here on top. It's first finished the body here. It means it checks this one, then it will check this one. And then if you have here the number three, it will uh, make a new line. That's important because this one after two, because let's say you are two here, it will go here with two, then it's here two, then it's here two, it prints out. And then it's incrementing to three, which means it will not go in here again. So that's why we make not the increment inside this if statement here, because the number three is not called here again, because you can't enter with three in this if statement again. And that's why I need this uh, case here outside. And I made this with a switch. Of course, you can make this with another if as well. I used here this if to repeat uh, the switch. And you see, and let's see if this works. We have still problems, right? We have still, don't forget, we have still here this strange, um, this strange thing here and other things, but let's test it so far if it works, right? So I say here, coder A. No, it's not working. The point is I print this one out. Where's my new line? Where's my new line? There is this, there is no no line actually. It's not really working. Perhaps I made something wrong. Let's see. It's array counter one. It says free and it should be new line. Um, something is wrong. It's not doing that what I wanted. And if you have a problem like this one, let's make again a debug fast. Um, then let's write coder fast. One. Uh, no, A. And here it will go now irritate through this one here. Let's go here. Now is array counter is U. Array counter is 3. 
Now, let's see. Now it's in... Oh. 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 You saw something? You saw something? Very important. It was here free. But... This was our range definition. Here it becomes free. But then it goes on to the next if statement here. Because it was free, it entered this if statement here. And, and it entered here. That's, that's wrong, right? It's, that's a problem. So... Which means if the array counter here becomes free, we have a problem here. All right, because it jumps there where it should not jump. Hmm. Hmm. It's four and a condition four we don't have. Of uh, here a case four, so it makes no sense. So we have to find here exactly at this point a way to say don't jump down here when you are free. Hmm. There are different solutions and actually now let's go back to this strange thing here what i showed you that was one solution try i i made this let's copy this one here back let's copy this one i put it here back and now you see this one here um is this one the right one here no this one is this uh, let's see here this one here is five. I should write here five. The first one is two. All right. This one here says, let's write here five. This one here, it says, and here I write this other one. Array counter. Oh, is this right? Oh, no, this one is not the right thing. But important, what I wanted to tell you is here, it becomes free and if it becomes free this one is entering this uh here and it should not enter right and i think this one we still kick it we uh, there are different solution tries let's kick this one and make the simple one so it takes not too much time in this video because this would take again a lot of time so that's why i go to the shorter solution which is um we add now this flag here we make another thing like a flag adding because i want that you should add here a flag let's go here and then we create this uh, flag here because let's make here a second let's copy this one it's just a, a boolean flag here copy local bool paste and set this by default to false and now here's one more thing what i get from top which is this flex checker copy is that this one what i have here uh, oh what's that i will check this in a moment let me finish this one here uh here's the for loop and here let's add this one here Okay, so what's saying here for? Uh, yes, where is it? Okay, here. Is that this gives up? And here, what I did wrong? Let's see. And what's the problem here? Expect it where they will jump the place, please. So, and then <laughs> I want that it jumps there. Well, ah, okay, that was stupid. Of course, I'm blind all the time when I make this one here. Um, uh, all right, I think this should work now. Let's see, there's still errors. Let's see what the error is. Yeah, it's this flex here, and uh, this array counter must be set to one, this one to two. This was that what I just added and again copy paste copy paste is very fast but you have really check all these values and careful if this is working and yeah right now this flag is only here to guarantee me that I can switch 
But how I switch, we still don't know. Let's start <laughs> and see what I did so far. We will see in a moment if this is working at all. Um, if I see it, yeah. Uh, coder, a. Oh no! Now we see not even uh even the numbers. So now I kicked anyhow even the numbers out. And that's very bad. And interesting is this flag is set here on top, only on the second one. So on the first one, I don't set this flag at all. All right, let's copy this. Uh, let's uh, cut this out. Paste this in the second one. And here, let's see what happens here. Let's see. And what we have here. It's not program was again order a all right it it works anyhow that was not so bad we have the numbers anyhow the question is now what i did i add some strange flag here and it worked so the first the one thing here we don't need till now that was all time i don't know what and now we add a strange flag a strange condition and now we have to check how this uh, is working. I mean, it is working anyhow, but how? But before we go on, let me copy the last one too. So I have the full iteration and add it here. And get rid of this one because we said we don't know this one. And here I make this one fast. Change here the parameters as well, here as well, and it should be good to go. And I now we have still no idea what I did with this flag here, but in a moment we will see it. Let me check this one fast if this is working. All right. No, it's not. It's not working because we have here the first one. This flag system works anyhow, but we have still no idea what the flag is. We need probably here a second flag, which means we had on top three flag, uh, two flags. Let's make here one more flag. Let's, uh, uh, let's create this flag here on top. Let's call this bool, add the flag, let the faults by default, and create this one here. Let's copy this one. Let's set this one also and set this uh, check to the flag free and save this one. Okay, now I think I just set up if this is working. And order A. No, it's not working. I thought it worked, so I made there a mistake. Uh, let's see, we have to make check. One thing, what is the mistake actually? Why is this not working? Uh, case, let's see, three, new, this one, like three as the number, of course. I copy paste again, you see, I copy paste this one from here, and of course, I change this one, but I change not the number here. That's why it's not working. Yeah, copy paste is nice, but like I said, check all the variables, but I'm not checking it myself. That's the best thing. And now, yes, it worked anyhow. So this one works, but how and why and so on. The question is here, what is this flag here? What is this doing? First of all, we till this point, we know it. Till this point, it is a range, right? Till this point is a range and the switch here gives us a new line if it's a free that's okay but why is why we need this flag or this array row switch flag to here what is that and why we need this condition here so let's see what this is doing it says if array counter one is exactly free it will be set to true so which means after this one is set to Three, <laughs> anyhow, this array switch flag is set to true, which means this one will be set here. The array counter will be set here first to three, and then you can enter this uh, the second part here. And this one here has not even a flag uh, to make it 
You could add here another flag here as well, so it keeps, but we don't need this one here. And actually, this flag here is our condition so that uh, we can enter the next uh, um, the next part. But before I made this strange thing, this strange debug where I said, oh, we have a problem. This one becomes free. And after this one becomes free, it is jumping directly here, right? And the solution is actually this array flag. But this problem is this naming is so bad. I could not figure it out. Again, a bad naming and we had to analyze it to understand what this really what this condition is so array row switch flag if you don't know what a switch flag is makes no sense so we should call this more like conditional anything like you know you have to find now a name which makes sense to indicate this that this uh, counter becomes free and if it becomes free, it should not go directly in it. And it's a condition for this one here. You see, naming can be sometimes difficult. I called it this way on the fly and this was a bad naming. Okay, so we found out this one is just to make sure that if this number is free here, it is not directly jumping to the next if loop because here it executes this one it becomes here free and after it becomes here free the condition here without this one let's say we have knit this one it will check yes array counter is free is true it would say is true array counter is less than six yes this is also true with free and it would try to execute this one as well and that we don't want because we want first that it becomes uh, it goes to the range two then we want that it be makes a new line and then we want in the next step that it jumps here and just execute this one here so and the solution was this flag setting right so i hope this was clear a little bit it was messy but the result is okay but here's one more problem what the hell was that here what i showed you here <laughs> there is one more thing right this this um okay we have found out this flag is okay but what the hell is that so this range is okay too so the only last thing is in our code in my code in the bad code we have something like that and what you see here is actually a thing what I tried before without the flag, which means instead of using that one, I tried something like setting up a upper limit. And then if this upper limit is not here, another condition instead of this flag, I set this upper limit condition. It was a try and it worked not out. And the best part is I forgot it in the code. Which means, <laughs> which means, which means this code here on top, this part here is a totally waste and irritates only people who read my code. Absolute crap. But why I showed you this? <laughs> because you will find all time codes which are not perfect, but it works right even this code here is not perfect it worked and then you copy sometimes this kind of codes from other places like i said in future we will learn to use online libraries you must be aware that all this kind of codes must be not perfect they have probably things in it which are not used or they were used but they forgot it like me to delay it. for example in my case I replaced this one with this one here because this one was easier just to set here the flag. But I forget just to delay this one. I tested this. I set up this one here. I set up this uh, flag system here. And then I tested this one here on top. It worked and I said I'm finished. That happens by on programming on the fly. And this is stage one where you just prototype it. You want 
test it. But you see, you create sometimes real crap code, but <laughs> you are still happy that it works. <laughs> and then when you repeat like this one here, you see, oh, this is not needed at all. And if we go here over and over again, you will see there are even more mistakes. There are even uh, better solutions. And this kind of stuff you will normally start doing on stage two, on stage three, polishing, che arrow checking, style checking, and all this kind of stuff, which we don't do right now because we, as a starter, are happy with stage one, which is prototyping and it works. But we get aware of that, right? That's it. So with that said, I'm almost finished. I'll show you the end result here one more time. Uh, order A. And you see, of course, it should go here. Uh, you can make here a space a little bit, but you see, I printed out the first part here. Then I will print out here the second part. Of course, um, I have to go on. For example, in this case, I write also the username. I formatted it a little bit. I make a new line there. And yes, this one is not finished. I think I did even more than this one here. But important is this one is even not close to that what we should do normally. And if you try this challenge uh, as a beginner, do it. You saw how many things I included here. We I used the switch, I used this ifs, I used this operators here, I used this new things with uh, new problems with this range and then how to make new lines and how to get uh, and how to use this uh, uh, arrays in the right direction. So if you copy this, that you'll be aware of all the variables. So you see, there is a lot of things when you uh, things to mention and you repeat a lot of things just by trying it. And that's why we make this. Uh, um, exercises and you should do this you should do this and try to reach this here this is the optimal if you uh, if you reach a vision like this one then i probably you probably made a lot of work and repeated a lot of things and this solution is just one solution there are different kind of solution for this one here uh, which goes on and in my case i used here on top and Important is I want to show you also this crap coding here a little bit that this can happen, right? That uh, some code are not optimal and sometimes you will copy, copy codes like that. And you have still to think if this is the best way. All right. This is, like I said, this is optional, but try as a beginner. It's worth it. And yeah, I think I stop here and in the next video, I will go for the next task, which is actually this one here, where we make an update here, update this old, um, array. And I think the other tasks here, what we have are much simpler than this, <laughs> this formatting task here. This formatting task here is, I think, the really the most difficult task here at all compared to the other one. The other ones are more or less easier. I think. I'm not sure. Perhaps not. But try it. Make it. And don't give up. Even if you can't do it, don't give up. Make errors. No problem. Just don't give up. Try to solve it. And you'll see. I, my code was also not perfect. Doesn't matter. But it, the, in the end, it should work as a prototype. And later you can rework it. You can polish it. You can make it better. But first, the first step is make a prototype. Make a working code. That's it. That's the goal. And that we did anyhow. In my case, I did this. Uh, this one I will replace later with the other code on top and uh, kick out these arrows here, what I made there. And with that said, I'm finished with this task here, with this, uh, um, with this task here, which is not really finished, but I hope you finish it and make it better than me. And if you have any questions or any complaints like all time or any suggestions for example what we can do or something like that tips and tricks write them all in the comments see you in the next video where we go to the next task and good luck have fun and don't give up bye